Hi everyone, it's singer and music broth volunteer Andrea here with your final singing lesson from my bedroom to yours. I've had such a great time creating this series for you all and I really hope that you've enjoyed it as much as I have. For our last lesson today, we're going to go over a couple of common questions that singers are always dying to know the answers to. <clears throat> Namely, how do I sing high and how do I strengthen my head voice and my chest to head transition, i.e. how do I sing high but powerfully? So these are both really great questions because, as we know, some of the most famous singers have an amazing range to sing really, really high notes but also belt them out very powerfully. So I want to preface today's workshop with some really important guidance that I have alluded to throughout the series and it's going to be particularly important for um, what we're aiming to do today, which is listen to your body. So a great vocal coach online that you can access through YouTube is Eric Arsenal. He does a thing called the AA approach and he talks about prideful practice, which is prideful practice, which is basically when you are practicing and you're not really aware of what you're doing. You're maybe not really focusing, you're um, doing it and you're straining, you're <clears throat> essentially just singing and not really listening to all the things we've been talking about when we talk about what we want our body to do during um, a vocal practice and when we're singing. Um, all about things like your relaxed throat and not straining, not listening to your body and paying attention to how the exercises are supposed to be done and really just spending some time with them. Like if you're doing prideful practice, you're not maybe trying to practice as much as you can or do at least have consistent vocal practice and you think I'll just get it done on the day um, and then you can end up damaging yourself. Because as we know, the ultimate goal here with these videos is powerful, effortless and consistent vocals without damaging them. And the only way that we're really going to do that is one, through practice. I know I keep saying it and it's, I'm not always the best at it, believe me, but practice, 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 practice. Even if you can't do it every day, a consistent routine with your practice um, is just really going to help you. Um, and no, also knowing when to stop. So particularly for the exercises we're doing today, you want to know where your limits are when it comes to your range. Um, hopefully when you've been doing the daily vocal exercises, your lip bubbles, your yayas, etc, you'll notice that there's a register you're definitely most comfortable in. There's a register where if you sing, uh, that's actually quite a little bit low for me, but there's um, a set of notes where you feel most comfortable with. And when you're learning how to really sing for the first time in terms of really engaging your body and, and being mindful of what's going on in your body when you're singing, you always want to start from a register in which you're comfortable with one that you know that you don't have to strain because that's going to help retrain your body into knowing um, what your limits are. So hopefully you've been able to do a little bit of that during your daily exercises and you might have even been able to identify the other point which is maybe which is the opposite, your weakest register which is between your chest voice and your head voice. So if we remember our chest voice ah. That's our chest voice. Ah, that's our head voice. And each of them will have a different uh, lower and upper limit. And doing the exercises more will help you um, understand where they meet. And usually you'll find in this, this the point where the two of them meet where you can't quite can't get them with your chest voice and you can just get them with your head voice. That's usually where, as I said, the singer, um, that's the singer's weakest register. Um, and, you know, that's why, like today, some singers will opt on top of doing their daily exercises to do um, once or twice a week, they'll do focused exercises on that part of the scale and on trying to improve their range for whatever reason. So what we might do in this area is we might, um, when we're doing art, we would incorporate some of our daily vocal exercises but caught in doing them to scale. So remember when we did la 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 like you would do them in that area. So say you want to reach this note, you might concentrate on the notes before it and there to work your way up to, into being able to do um, that note. Today, with today's video, again, I want to emphasize that everyone's range is different. And if you feel like you have a limited range usually, or even just today, that's completely okay. And I want to make a point in saying that that doesn't make you any less of a singer. So yes, there are exercises out there that with consistent and mindful practice will help extend your range. And we're going to go into that in a minute. However, 
if at any point I or any other vocal coach is doing notes that you feel like you're straining to do, you feel like you can start feeling it in your jaw and your throat, and we'll talk more about what we're looking for um, later on, um, you, will, you, you should feel comfortable to just step off of that and just and not, um, not try and, and push yourself to do that note because in, Engaging your voice and properly and increasing your range is a gradual process and it's only with consistent practice that you're going to yield results. And even just doing everyday singing practice or having a consistent daily routine or a weekly routine with your vocal practice will also help towards improving your strength and also helping improving your range. If you're singing more in um, certain ranges, if you're singing more here, then, then you usually would, then you're going to get stronger doing that. But the important thing is to learn how to do that properly first so that you're not straining. And if you ever do feel like you're straining, you want to stop. You want to stop, either stop, take a break, or stop and come a lot farther down to where you're comfortable with. Go back to the comfortable register to retrain your throat and your voice to know what it is you want to do, which is be nice and relaxed. And we're going to go into that, recap all that in a bit more detail in a second. Nevertheless, as I've mentioned, there are a couple of exercises that we can do to help improve our range. So everything we're going to do today touches on aspects of previous exercises that we've done. So if you've not had a look at those videos, I would definitely recommend those first because we're going to be getting through a lot today. Um, and we want you to know a couple of the kind of um, pieces of terminology that we're going to use in terms of a uh, what we're going to be doing. So things like what knowing what a lip bubble is and things like that. So go on over and watch that video first and then come back to me here. That's absolutely fine. So. Today's going to be quite fun though. Um, I've said before that a lot of vocal exercises are quite playful and a little silly and today is definitely no exception. But before we get into that, first of all, we're going to recap what sensations we are looking for in the body when we come to do our vocal practice. As I said in the second episode, your body is so important because there's so many different muscles at work. Sometimes they shouldn't be and sometimes they should be. Some should be less engaged and some should be more engaged than what we usually find when we start singing for the first time. Um, but really learning to be more mindful about your body and what your body's doing when you're singing is going to help you immensely. And it can seem like grueling work sometimes because much like doing things like mindfulness practice because you're easily distracted and you're easily doing something else or easily think, all right, that's not actually that bad. But really um, spending a little bit of time um, learning how to harness these is going to do you so, so much good. It's really changed my, my perspective on my singing and what ability that I do have um, and the fact that I can work on it more and I can get better. I can always get better um, by coming back to learning about my body. So, as I said before, we want good posture. Always, always the best thing that you can do. And I'm guilty of doing it sometimes as well. Don't get me wrong. On my, YouTube, uh, on my Facebook page and also when I'm playing gigs is doing gigs playing sitting down. Um, but the best thing that you can do, especially if you're doing your vocal practice, is standing up. Um, it just means that you are open and you've got more space for your lung lungs to expand. Your lungs to expand. Your lungs to expand. So we want good posture. We want nice, relaxed shoulders. Not up here. Nice, relaxed shoulders. We want them back and away from the ears. So we want really opens up our chest area here, and that's really going to help us. Remember that the the breath is not going to be going into the chest, it's going to be going into here. So we want to make sure that we can fully inflate the belly with our inhale. And the other thing is that's really, really important is obviously identifying our diaphragm. And I've said before in another video, the easiest way for we can do that is by doing a very, very, very gentle cough. <laughs> so you can feel it there. So there's a few different muscles that come to work, but your, your diaphragm is here. And the th important thing to note when we're talking about the diaphragm, when we talk about it giving us support and power when we're singing, is actually a lot of people, when they're tensing, their, uh, when they're working the diaphragm, they tend to push downwards, down towards the pelvis. It's kind of a little bit like when you go to the bathroom, you know, you're kind of... <gasps> oh, 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 you know? <laughs> And what we really want to do when we're talking about working the diaphragm and using the diaphragm to support us when we're singing is really the diaphragm is supposed to lift the breath up and out of our out of our chest and out of our throat. So we and that's really good to practice doing too, being able to lift because you don't want it to be rigid all the time. You want it to be able to kind of gently support you when you're reaching notes because that's where the power is coming from, not here. 
when we're talking about here, we're going to be going on to the, obviously we're going to be talking about the throat, which is another important muscle that we want to be aware of, but not necessarily working as hard as people often think we have to when we sing. There's three ways that we're going to learn how to <clears throat> understand what kind of throat position that we're looking for when we are singing. And all of these are going to help you. And if there is ever any point where you're not sure, you're like, Am I, is my throat doing the right thing? I feel like maybe it's not. Maybe you feel like you might start to strain. And remember, if it's because of a note being too high, just come up off of that. That's absolutely fine. Um, these are great exercises for you to do in conjunction with the ones I'm going to show you later on um, to make sure that your throat's doing the right thing while you're doing the exercise because again there's no point in learning all of these things if you um, are not gaining awareness of how you're supposed to do them correctly because you could end up doing more damage and that's why we want to make sure that if there's ever any straining or throat pain or jaw or getting too tense or whatever or you're trying to reach a note we come up off of that because that doesn't help anybody so the first one we're going to do, there's three ways for us to identify how we, um, or three ways I like to use for us to identify how we want our throat to feel. The first one we're going to do is we're going to bend our heads. Now you might remember this from the stretching episode where we basically, uh, when we did the body and you basically almost like your head's going off a cliff. You just, oh. and what, I'm going to kind of go off on my tiptoes here. Um, what we want to do is we want to notice how the jaw feels relaxed because gravity is working. Really just really let your head flow. Feel how naturally the front of the mouth, the front of the throat, sorry, relaxes underneath the chin um, and the jaw is just very, is really relaxed because gravity is doing its job for us. And that's what we're looking for when we're, when we're sitting up straight. And you can feel obviously at the back of the neck you'll feel, be able to feel kind of going down the sides of the back of your neck and down into your spine, um, that stretch when you bend your head forward. And that just shows you that all of these muscles here are all connected. And one of the interesting things is that our throat feels quite relaxed because if you imagine our vocal cords are usually at this, when we bend our head forward, we do this. So we're compressing them, but um, it feels kind of more open. And as I said, if you're having trouble with any of the other exercises and you don't know whether your throat's doing the right thing, try doing it with your head bent forward. So it's really good for identifying having a nice relaxed jaw, having a nice relaxed kind of under the chin area and throat. So we want to try and maintain that even when our heads are up straight. The next way that we're going to identify that we're doing the right things with our throat, it's quite simple. We're going to put our fingers on our larynx. So kind of here and usually when you talk you'll be able to feel vibrations on your throat but sometimes if you were to try and sing ah, if you were to try and sing a high note um you can feel movement in your throat here in this area um and we don't want that we want to try and have it as still as possible when we're singing we really actually don't need to be using our throat that much especially when we go into trying to do higher notes, to push a note or to make a note sound right, like not flat and not too sharp. That power is coming from our breath and from our diaphragm, not from our throat. So a couple of good exercises you can do while you're doing this is a kind of knee knot. And you want to try and make it as smooth as possible and it will it'll take some practice for you to you feel that you're apart from the vibrations at, at which you'll feel anyways you will um be able to feel you won't be able to feel it going up and down because you're able to have a bit more control over relaxing your throat another one you can do is with zzz. so you can sound a little bit like a, a hoover i think So this is particularly useful if you're going to be going up the range a little bit and trying to fit, uh, play a little bit around a little bit with your range and with trying to improve it. This is a good way for you to know whether you're straining your voice while you're trying to reach those higher notes is doing it kind of na, 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 like a nino or um, a and again, when that's happening, we want to make sure the rest of the jaw is nice and relaxed. 
shoulders as well. We want to make sure that they're nice and down when we're doing that. So lastly, um, which is again particularly useful for increasing your range, is of course yawning. Yawning is a great way for you to identify how your throat is supposed to feel while you're saying so. And what we want to do is we want to do a kind of long nod. We want to and you feel how relaxed your throat is afterwards. Yeah, we can really, we can really, really feel that. The other thing you might feel when you're yawning is again we've used this for a couple of exercises. Is it's kind of near the end where you get it's almost as if it's between your nasal passage and your throat where they connect. You can almost feel like a little kind of air bubble there, almost like a. And that's going to be particularly useful because that's how we're going to pass. That's how we're going to release high notes is kind of through and almost in that kind of area there. Um, so it's a really good way for you to to figure out how to how that feels and oh, be able to feel that there when you're singing as well. So now we know what to keep in mind when we're doing our vocal practice, we're going to move on to our first exercise, which is going to help us to improve our range or as we, some people may ask it, how to sing higher notes. So some of you might remember from the third video when we introduced lip bubbles, we did something called a sliding scale where we go And lip bubbles again are another great way for you to be able to explore that upper, um, those upper parts of your register. Um, but we can also do this by sighing, by doing because you're getting that kind of, you'll get almost like with the yawning, you get that kind of bubble in between your kind of nasal passage and your throat. Where you go, oh. And you'll notice again that it helps your throat staying very relaxed. It's just a great tool in general. A lot of these exercises are helping you to make sounds, but not necessarily by singing them. Um, and then you can transfer that ease into when you're singing those notes as opposed to when you're just sighing the notes. So. So we really, we don't need to um, tap the note too long, we can just go oh, oh. and notice that you're not necessarily trying to, you're not focusing on straining your voice to hit the note, the, ah, kind of, ah, um, you're just letting it happen, you're letting it pass over. Oh, oh. You know, we're not 100%, it doesn't need to be 100% on pitch, but it's just about the way that you're doing it. And of course, once you do this a few times, pause the video if you'd like, and practice it a few times on your own, just picking whatever note you like. If you want to... Start on a note that is more comfortable with you and then work your way up, you can do that. Or you can kind of just be playful about it, just... You know, it can be it can be a lot of fun. Another thing that you can do is you can do it if you're, if you're having trouble. As we've said, you can do it with a bowed head if you're trying to do. It. You know, once you practice that a few times, you can actually try and see if you can sustain the note. So rather than doing, you're gonna do. you'll notice that you find it so much easier to reach a note that you've not maybe been able to quite reach before. Um, so yeah, really, really great tip. We want to note as well that we want to make sure that we're keeping the rest of our body still. Um, and we're also trying, as again, we're trying to keep the tongue and the throat relaxed. The next exercise, which is good, which is really good for helping you improve your range, is quite similar in a way as it makes you do the note without actually thinking that you're singing the note. And that's by laughing. <laughs> And it is, it's funny, people think you're a bit mad, but we try that hard. And we can feel, again, we can use our diaphragm um, to really help support that and lift up the note. 
you know, and you can try that a few times with a few different notes, whatever it is that you like to. As I said, this is a little bit of a more playful lesson, you can have a lot of fun with it, like we do with some of the other strange noises that we make when we're warming our voice up. Picking different notes, so I'm going to be picking this high D because I know it's something that I do struggle with. The and again, it's the exact same, we're wanting to make sure that our throat, we can do it again with the, we can try doing it with the finger in the throat. And I can actually feel there's a little bit of strain there, so it's something that I need to work on. Doing. And when, again, if we practiced it a few times, you can maybe try just going from the la. To sustaining that note. The last exercise that we're going to do that specifically is about um, learning to increase your range, improve your range to be able to sing higher notes. Um, again, quite similar to the first exercise where we're going to be doing a scale where we're going to be going in, but we're going to be doing it to a word. So again, we want to remind ourselves with a yawn, that kind of airiness, um, the kind of bubble of air kind of up in between our kind of nasal passage and our throat. We want to remember that effortless throat feeling, the jaw, again we can do it with our heads bowed as well to make sure that our jaw is nice and relaxed. And we're going to do you, as in you, as in you, you right there, yeah, you, yeah, you, yeah, you. So we're going to do you, you, and again I'm not really hitting on the note Fully, and that's why it's a great way for you to learn because you're not having to strain yourself to sustain a note. You can do that afterwards once you've kind of learned and become more comfortable with it. Yo! Yo! I know this is going to sound silly, but get your kids along and get them to try it with you. Let's do it together. One, two, three. Yo! And again, if this is too high for you, you can move it down. Yo! Or. Yo! Yo! That one's a good one for, for us to learn. Yo! Yeah, so we do. Yo! And again, just play around with it, do different notes. Um, again, you don't need to have a piano in the house if you've got another instrument or even if you've got an app that you can put up on your phone um, that will be able to play different notes for you. It's very, very helpful. Um, we can also do this, a little bit of a variant on this, which is where we go. Ooh. Again, that actually is good. We're going into our, our, the second half of this video because, um, for some, because of the way that um, when you're doing the b, uh, it traps the air and it helps to create a lot of more power. Ooh. When you're when you're singing, and that helps um, when we're trying to get more power in our higher notes. Ooh. So if I try. Ooh, see how really now even compared to when we did it the first time um when we just did the ah see how more powerful that sounds boom boom so you can try it at home and then again as we did with the other two exercises you can try and sustain that after you've done it you can go So next we're going to be talking about another common issue which we've just touched on which is strengthening that section of your register between your chest voice and your head voice particularly because you want to be able to sing high notes powerfully. So that's re it's really important connection to make if you want to sing higher notes more powerfully we need to strengthen that connection between your chest voice and your head voice. And there's a lot to do with creating tone and resonance and texture so that your kind of falsetto voices, if we imagine that, the kind of head voice, it doesn't sound kind of too airy and out there. Sometimes that can work for certain genres, but sometimes you really want to be able to belt out that really nice kind of noise and you want to be able to do that. And I haven't been, it wasn't able to do that for a long time, but learning how to do a couple of these techniques has really, really helped me. So as I said, um, there's a couple of exercises here that we can do that are, again, a little bit fun and playful. But um, we want to keep in mind what we've said throughout the video about what we want with our body, our chest, our um, throat, our neck and our jaw and our shoulders. Um, keeping everything relaxed and making sure that if you're doing anything that's too high, to stop 
um, or any tension, you want to stop um, and come back down a little bit again. So a really great way that we can do this is by using a straw. Now, if you don't, you can use any kind of straw. Um, I <laughs> didn't have a straw in the house. I don't usually keep straws in the house, so I just made one out of some paper. And you can, it depends, like you can, you'll be able to feel what it is is creating a little bit of tension um, with the release in terms of like how much air that you're able to get out at, out and it means that you're not straight because you're not going ah and you're not pushing all of the air out at once it means that you're not going to be relying on your throat to strain when you're trying to reach those higher no notes so and sometimes if it's a little bit too loose what we're looking for we are looking for a little bit of resistance here so you can even kind of push it down a little bit give you a little that little bit of tension so I'm going to flatten mine down a little bit um, or if you're, if you're using kind of those little plastic straws take a few of them at a time figure out what it is that feels good for you but what you're looking for is just a little bit of resistance when it comes to you blowing air through and just like with the first exercise where we did the sighing uh, the sighs where we did a kind of sliding so oh, we're going to do the same thing but we're going to do it through a straw So again, I need to kind of tighten it up a little bit because um, I want to kind of have a little bit more pressure. You also don't want too much pressure where you're like, you know, you don't want to be a big kind of puffy cheeked chipmunk or anything like that. But you want to have a certain amount of tension in there going through this, but not in your throat and this bit here. So that's a little bit too much tension now, so I need to loosen it up. So it's something that you can kind of play with a little bit. Um, it does help if you have pre-made straws. Um, but if not, there's always things, obviously if you're at home and you're not wanting to go out, there's loads of things that you can make a little straw out of at home, and maybe a better one than mine. But the idea is that you're wanting to kind of, and you'll be able to feel it, you will be able to feel it. It's hard for me to explain it to you right now because you're kind of like, what? Um, and I was the same when I first learned this technique, but once you actually make yourself a straw or get yourself a straw and start doing, you'll notice that there's a kind of easy, um, too loose end and then there's like a too tight end where you're really um you're going to start hurting yourself so once you've found that perfect um balance between the two in terms of like what kind of tension you want going through your straw you can do your sliding you can do your sliding as or your sliding size rather you can do Is we can actually practice a song through it. So we can do. It's also really great for breath control as well. So. <laughs> so that was the straw exercises and as I said there's a few variations on that and the best way for you to, to really feel what I'm talking about is to go get yourself a straw or go make yourself one and you'll be able to see um, how you make kind of perfect tension. Another way you can do it is by putting your finger slightly over the end, not fully over but slightly over the end uh, of your straw to create a little bit of a better balance between uh, what kind of tension you're looking for when, it, when your ear comes out. So the next exercise that we're going to do, which is probably my favourite, um, just because it is really funny, um, is again helping to improve our tone and our resonance, especially when we are doing higher notes. So in order for us to do that, we're going to have to put on a little bit of a silly voice. Um, and it's kind of like a, a dopey, a dopey, a little bit of a dopey voice. You're kind of looking for that relaxed jaw and open throat and... You might even feel that little yawning air bubble at the top of your head in between your sinus and your throat as we've said and the idea is we're going to do the we're going to do the word yeast we're going to do the word yeast in case you didn't that what you add you know the thing you add to bread yeast we're going to do that but we're going to do it in a dopey voice we're going to do it in a dopey voice because we have quite lows, we have quite highs as well. 
and it really helps to lift that sound right over the top of our tongues and out of our throats with the help from the diaphragm. So we do the word yeast. One, two, three, yeast, yeast, yeast. And again, <laughs> it takes me a while just to like not come out of that. We can do that um, to notes as well. So, yeast, 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 yeast. Yeast. And again, we can put our fingers on our larynx to make sure that we're not straining too much. Yeast. 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 And again, it just helps to improve your tone when you're going to go and do the... Can you believe that that came from... Hey, it's a dopey voice. <laughs> But it really, it really does work. It really does help. So it's a great one to do as well. Um, if you've got kids, it's always important to learn how to do different character voices. Um, so you get that one for free, my friend. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's genuinely one of my favourite ones just because I've always loved doing voices and, and it's a great excuse for me to do them when I'm doing my singing practice. So the last exercise we're going to do today, um, which again tackles that um, creating that transition or a smooth transition from your chest voice to your head voice and helping you sing um, higher but also more powerful notes when you're higher is um, a little bit like a variation on one of the exercises that we did when we did the lip bubbles and the ya yas. We did the mmm. Remember that when we did, if you imagine when you say the word sing, sing. So say the word sing for me, everybody. Sing, sing really pay attention to it as well because sometimes when we say oh we're going to do the mm, uh, exercise people tend to go mm, and you can't see it from here but my tongue is up there that's not what we want when you actually when you actually say the word sing your tongue the tip of your tongue is behind your bottom front teeth and that's where we want it to be when we're doing the mm. so we want to do an mm, 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 mm. So we can do that. So once you know what the what the sound is, and you'll be able to feel it again in that kind of between your nose and your throat in the nasal passage, and again keeping the rest of your neck and your uh, chin and your jaw nice and relaxed. Again, if you're finding trouble with that, you can do the exercise with your head bent. Mm -hmm. We'll do it to a note together. So we'll do the note together. You can do this note or you can do a note lower if this one's too high for you. So we'll do it together. One, two, three. Mm. Brilliant. And again, that's one that helps improve tone. But what we're going to do this time is we're going to do that. We're going to go from mm to ah. So remember when we did the ah, 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 ah. It's kind of like that. You want to make sure the tip of the tongue is still at the... Um, behind the front, the bottom front teeth. And what's gonna happen is the rest of your jaw is not going to move. The rest of your, your chin and your jaw and your throat is not gonna move. All we're gonna do when we go from the mm to the ah uh, is we're gonna drop the back of our tongue. So we're gonna go. Mm -hmm. Let's try it together. One, two, three. Mm -hmm. Let's try it one more time. One, two, three. Mm -hmm. And um, you can do it, you can do variants of it. So you can do like kind of sounds like a little bit like a didgeridoo. If you do it, you can go. And again, you can try this. Um, the idea is, is that you can transfer these exercises to that particular, wherever it is on a scale where that you start to struggle, where you would start to strain. I was doing it, I was doing it too low there, that's probably why. Um, 
so yeah, it can sometimes also sound a little bit like an ambulance as well. Um, but it's really good fun and it's a really, the last one that I've showed you here, the mm to the ah, is a really, really, really great for being able to strengthen those notes. Um, and again, when we're doing this, we want to make sure that we're um, staying mindful of our throat and mindful of our larynx and whether it's moving too much, if it is, and we're starting to strain and it's starting to tense and we want to stop, come back down. So I'll lower note. So those are all of the exercises that um, I've been able to find out there that I find pretty useful um, for helping you to both improve your range and also be able, to, be able to improve the quality of your range in terms of being able to sing powerfully even if you're singing really really high notes. So I hope you've enjoyed. Um, if you really 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 enjoyed this series then I am taking one uh, off donations right now at paypal.me uh, forward slash that Andrea because obviously right now I'm not gigging um, and this is something that I'd like I'd, I've always wanted to do I've always wanted to explore doing some singing lessons so if you're able to and if you really enjoy the series back uh, in your house then please consider donating and um, you can also support me by going on to my Facebook Instagram and Twitter and following me there at that Andrea music um, right now I've been doing a cover a day challenge so if you have any requests for me that you'd like me to sing then you can pop them down in the comments of one of the videos there and also, if you feel like you've conquered all of your singing phobias and you like to take this kind of attitude towards another instrument in the orchestra, then right now, during lockdown, Music Broth are offering instrument and equipment delivery to your home for our members. The membership starts at just £6 a month um, and that gives you access to over a thousand instruments, books, equipment um, and pieces of gear that you can use for your next music project. So it can be either £6 a month or uh, £60 a year for you to become a member and you can, during the lockdown, it might be a great time for you to start learning a new instrument now that you've done your all of your, done all of our singing lessons together. So if you'd like more information about that, you can check out Music Broth on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter or you can email info at musicbroth.org for more details. And yeah, this is the end of our, our singing lesson series uh, from my bedroom to yours. My name is Andrea. I've had such an, I've had such a ball doing all this for you. Um, and I really hope that all of these lessons have helped give you just a little bit more confidence in going out there and singing your heart out. Because as I said in the last episode, when you're confident and when you're singing, then the whole world sings with you. And what a brilliant world we would live in if we were all singing all the time, right? <laughs> Thank you so much. We'll see you soon. Stay safe. Stay well. Thank you.